Hello, and welcome to From Fluffy to Foxy. My name's Miranda, and this is the Midweek Weigh-In for Week 5. So today we are going to talk about exercise inflammation, holding weight, and my birthday. That's right, this week I am having my birthday. So let's get at it. So as I mentioned last week, I started going back to my martial arts class. It is every Tuesday night and Saturday morning, and it is IQ. This martial art form is not a kick and punch attack style. It is a more defensive style of martial art. The reason I like it so much is because you use your opponent's momentum against them, and it doesn't matter if you're a smaller or weaker person, you use their pressure points and their momentum against them, so it actually can work for a smaller or shorter person against a stronger or taller more uh, opponent. So I really do enjoy this type of martial art style, and I'm back at it and had a very enjoyable return, but I was very sore afterwards. And I am also back to doing my weightlifting. So I have been causing a lot of inflammation in my body recently that has not had to deal with inflammation recently. So I'm seeing that result on the scale a little bit. Um, when you have inflammation in your body, you tend to have more water in those areas of your body that are inflamed. And unfortunately, that can add to some extra water weight when you're doing a weight loss. So I did see that there was a little bit extra water being held because of the inflammation on my body. And that is going to go away over time, not a big deal. And as I lose regular fat and things like that, it's going to be not an issue. But I do have to be mindful that as I put myself through more cardio and more weight uh, lifting, it is going to cause inflammation on my body. And I may not see drastic weight loss if that's what I'm expecting. So I need to keep that in mind as I go through my weight loss. Another thing I need to keep in mind is that what goes in must come out. So whether it is water or liquids or whether it is food, it still needs to come out of your body in some form. So if it hasn't been a very productive time for those events, then it's going to remain in your body. And if it's remaining in your body, then it's going to cause weight gain. So I was looking at my scale and I noticed that I did gain half a pound almost, about 0.6 pounds. And I did notice that some of these things, the inflammation and what goes in must come out, might be causing this sudden uptick in the last couple of days. So I need to be mindful of these things when I do my weigh-in and not take it too harshly on the fact that there's a sudden uptick and why that might be. I need to make sure that I'm looking at it from a data point rather than an emotional point. And also, in two days, since today's Wednesday, I will be having my birthday. I am turning 45. I know, I don't look it. But I will be turning 45, and part of me is thinking that I might be holding myself back a little here. When I do something, I do it all in. I am very competitive by nature. And when I try something new, I go all in. I try my best to be perfect. And that can be a downfall, unfortunately. So with my birthday coming up in a couple of days, part of me thinks that I may not be buying in completely to 100% weight loss, all in, everything, because I want to wait till after my birthday. Because what do we do on our birthday? We have a big celebration. Once my birthday is done, in my immediate family, there are no other birthdays until the middle of the summer. So I've got months and months of like four and a half, five months before anyone else's birthday. Plenty of time to be able to get routines in place, get habits down, and be able to have things in place for special occasions. And I really had to sit with that because I really want to go all in on this. I really want to make this the last time 
that I lose this weight. I was really excited back in 2020 when I got below 200 pounds for the first time in like two decades. And then I gained it back and some. And I don't want to have to do that again. It was really emotionally a negative experience for me. And I really was very unhappy about where I ended up. And I've probably lost a literal metric ton over my lifetime of weight I've lost and gained back and lost and gained back through yo-yo dieting. This time I want it to be a lifestyle change that happens and stays that way. I lose this stubborn weight and I don't go back. I want it to be the lifestyle change I keep for the rest of my life. I want to be able to be mobile and functional when I'm in my 60s and 70s and 80s. And the way I'm going now, it won't be that way. I'm going to be someone who can't walk up a flight of stairs uh, without getting out of breath when I'm older. I'm going to be walking with a cane or a walker. And I don't want to be that when I'm older. I want to be someone who can reach down or kneel down on the floor to pick something up and be able to get up under my own power. And that seems like it's something that's a little goal, but it's actually monumental and something that needs to be prepared for now. If you wait until you're in your 60s, it's going to be far too late. So I need to start preparing for that now so that when I hit my 60s and 70s, I'm not walking with a walker. I'm not having a cane. I'm able to get up off the floor when I drop something and I'm not worried about uh, being near furniture to be able to hoist myself back up. These little things are things that I'm really concerned about now and I should be. So these are things I'm going to want to do and to do that I need to shed this extra weight and, and become more mobile, more flexible. And that's part of the reason why this has to be a lifestyle going forward. And that's just as simple as that. So with that in mind, this is going to be a permanent thing. This is going to be a long journey. I've got well over 100 pounds to lose. And I'm going to do the slow, steady, turtle-like approach to make sure that it stays off permanently this time. And I want to know in the comments below, are any of you even concerned about your mobility or your health in your late 60s, 70s, 80s? Is it something that's even crossed your mind yet? Is it something that you never considered before that how you treat your body now may impact you later? And are you taking any steps that will increase the odds of you being more mobile or more healthy when you're older? I'm really actually interested in the comments below if you're doing something proactively now to make sure that you're healthy when you're in your late stages of life. So as I mentioned, I'm up 0.6 pounds during this midweek weigh-in. I have my birthday coming up on Friday. I already have a plan in place for not overindulging on that day. Uh, I have a plan in place for the next couple of days to stay on track. And I have a plan going forward on Sunday and I want you guys to tune in for Sunday because I'm going to reveal that plan to you so that you know what is going to happen going forward because actually I have some pretty exciting things I'm going to start posting to show the tea on what is going on with my journey. So I'm going to keep this one a little shorter. Uh, subscribe below so that you don't miss Sunday's video and until next time stay amazing.